And welcome back, everybody, to the Brody Ball. We're now joined by a very special guest. You may remember him from the Clinton years. Yes, the man behind the podium, dealing with that pesky press, though all those people, and answering those fun questions, former press secretary for President Clinton, Mike McCurry. Mike, thank you for being here. Great to be with you. And let me talk to you a little <clears throat> bit about uh, this whole idea of common ground. Uh, we, hear it, we hear that phrase all the time in evangelical circles. And I talked to Tony Perkins um, earlier, and he talked a little bit about these progressive evangelicals and what he believes some of their motives are and, and where they're coming from, at least their point of view. Take a listen and, and look at the monitor here. Take a look. When liberal Christians talk about social justice, they talk about working that social justice through the government. Uh, and scripture doesn't point to that. It points to individual responsibility. And I think Arthur Brooks uh, has written a great book about this, Who Really Cares? And it talks about the benefits that uh, follow actually helping your fellow man. Not, and and those, those benefits are absent when you do it through government. Mike, it seems that the government intervention seems to be a major sticking point between both sides. What's your sense on that? Well, you know, we need government for many things, among other things, to kind of keep us secure, to protect us from external threats, to help us live in the kind of communities that we want to have. So I think Tony's a little bit wrong there. The tool of government is what we have to use prudently to help us when we need help. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't disagree with him that individual action, and particularly individual action based on our faith, what we do to reach out to the least, the last, the lost, what Matthew 25 calls us to do to take care of those who are homeless in need and who, you know, really want us to respond as a community. That is kind of how many of us on the progressive left see the tool of government. There is a segment of the show that we did earlier. We call it the Kumbaya section. Kumbaya, my Lord. Uh, where, you know, can we not just all hold hands and to quote, I guess, the philosopher Rodney King from the L.A. riots, can we all just get along? Uh, but tell me a little bit, uh, when it comes to common ground, what are, where are some areas that evangelicals from conservative to progressive can actually make a difference and come together? I think when it comes to poverty and attacking the root causes of poverty globally and in our own communities, there's a lot of work that's being done by Christian evangelicals on the right, by progressives on, progressives on the left to say, look, there's an agenda there that we agree that we have to address together because we are called to take care of those who are poor. Protecting God's creation. Uh, you know, this is a beautiful world that we've created. And I think increasingly we see in wanting to protect this planet and coming together around things that we can do uh, to make sure that we don't destroy the fragile nature of our ecosystems. Uh, we see some real commonality there between right and left, where some things that we can do to, to, to work together. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to peace, how do we advance, you know, a world in which we free ourselves of war, that we truly are the blessed peacemakers that we are called to be by mm -hmm. Scripture? I think there are some things that unite us there. The one that's always around is abortion. I mean, well, and then where, do you, where do you go on that? And it is there, and it, and it will be there, and I think that's important to, to name the differences that we have there. There's no question to me that people who in good faith believe that life begins at conception and who think that it is an abomination, in fact murder, for abortion to occur, have to make the moral case stridently that we have to end all abortions. I think those of us who are not as sure of when you know, God gives us that divine spark, uh, who maybe have a more tolerant view of the question of abortion and see from the perspective of the woman that sometimes that that's the only awful choice that's available, we take the position, all right, we want to work to make abortion, as we said in the Clinton years, uh, safe, legal, and rare. Mm -hmm. And I would actually put rare at the top of that list. You know, Democrats talked a lot about these issues in 2008. I mean, you had Barack Obama, and you had a lot of these faith forums. Hillary Clinton was out there, and I actually interviewed Hillary Clinton uh, as it relates to her faith, and she talked, I mean, she talked at length, a good 45 minutes or so about uh, faith and politics and s some of the personal difficulties during that time. Here's a little bit about her faith. Take, take a listen to this. My faith has sustained me. It has informed me. It has saved me. It has um, chided me. It has challenged me. Uh, and I don't know who I would be or where I would be had I not been uh, given that gift of those, you know, years of, uh, you know, tutelage through my faith. Uh, I've seen her at some moments of extreme pain caused, frankly, by the behavior of her husband. 
And I know how much her faith sustained her in those moments and gave her the capacity for forgiveness, uh, gave her a sense of her duty to family, mm -hmm. uh, things that I think that we cherish, whether we're conservatives or liberals. And I, I think that's a, a very genuine expression of faith. Democrats have a hard time talking about these things. Right. It's a very curious thing. I think, I think that's because in the conservative evangelical traditions, professing your faith and witnessing comes much more naturally. I think for the liberal mainstream Protestants, Hillary, like me, both we're, we're both Methodists, mm -hmm. I think that the ability and capacity to talk about our faith in an open way like that is diminished because it's not part of the way in which our religious tradition actually operates in the world. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's been, I think that's a problem. That's one of the things, by the way, that I, I continually tell my Democratic friends in politics, be open. People want to see a little bit about who we are. What is our character? What is the nature of how we feel God calls us to behave in the world? Some of these questions that we were just talking about. What do we right. see as the role of government from a moral point of view? These are, these are very important questions. When we come back, where we have a few more minutes left with uh, Mike McCurry here, uh, we are going to take a quick break. and We've got some more questions. Back in a moment.